Since the first episodes of this playlist on the calendars of ancient Mexico, I have talked about codices. Here and there, I have also shared spectacular, colorful selections from these ancient manuscripts to show the imaginative ways native Mesoamericans brought the calendar into their art and thought. Then what are codices? In the ancient Mesoamerican world, a codex was a text painted upon a long sheet, typically made from deer skin or bark paper. The even folds made sure that every page was roughly the same size, so that it could be neatly folded after reading. They were like books, and indeed during the colonial period, both native and Spanish historians compared codices to books because of their similar shapes and contents. Several plates could be opened and read together as a single unit, depending how long the section ran. Only specialized scribes could prepare the art for these manuscripts. You may have already noticed that much of the text so far is in pictures and symbols, whose meanings were specific and standard enough to count as writing. In fact, in many ancient Mesoamerican languages, painting and writing often blurred into a single concept. The Aztec Tlaquilo and the Maya Atzib were artists who preserved cultural ideas upon these pictorial works. Every codex before the conquest used at least one calendar system, especially the 260-day mythical calendar I detailed in this playlist last episode. This video will visit the three major regions that produced codices, each using the mythical calendar in distinct ways. In the yellow region is the Maya civilization, whose scribes employed the 260-day calendar to chart astronomical events. In the purple region of western Oaxaca are the Mixtec, who cited the calendar to tell history. And in red are the Aztec and Cholula cultures of central Mexico, where they painted elaborate calendars to measure the rhythms of sacred presence. The Maya were among the most precise astronomers of their time. They charted the moon's path to the minute, and they were following other celestial courses with literally religious attention. Because native gods populated the ancient codices, during the colonial period the church condemned these works as idolatry, leading unfortunately to burning or losing many of them, perhaps in the hundreds. The Maya codices that have survived from before the conquest are only four. All four are planetary almanacs, predicting heavenly movements such as lunar eclipses and Venus periods. Interspersed among the pages of the Maya codices are mythical scenes and god profiles. Glyphs clarify gods and events, such as in this section from the Dresden Codex. Gods are making fires by spitting drills into day glyphs, dividing the 260-day calendar, Tzolkin in Maya, into shorter spans of days. Each set has positive or negative influences, depending on the section in which gods are present within. At left is a fabulous rendition of a two-headed crocodile similar to Maya myths of two-headed serpents arching beneath the sky. Urching from the main face, pointing left, is the creator god Itzanach, reminding us of the calendar's cosmic quality. In the description, I have posted a link to an article by Edwin Barnhart for more details on this richly illustrated text. The Maya codices are windows in the observatory, through which to peer into the spirit worlds of the Maya sky. Among the forested highlands of western Oaxaca, the Mixtec peoples were also creating works of exquisite painting and text, but in a different manner and for different purposes than their Maya peers to the east. The Mixtec codices were royal histories, the feats of kings and queens. If you watched the last video, you may remember how the 260-day mythical calendar acted like a horoscope, bringing a variety of influences upon the person born on a distinct combination of 13 numbers and 20 signs. The Mixtec people also used these calendar signs to name the royal newborns. Their codices recount the adventures and conquests of King Eight Deer, King Four Wind, Queen Six Monkey, and other nobles identified by the number sign combination. This facsimile of the Vienna Codex is on display at the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City. I must apologize in advance for reading this in the opposite direction from the actual right to left order. Notice the red bars that neatly separate the images in a narrative effect similar to a zigzag, giving the story a waving up and down rhythm. Unique combinations of colors and symbols label villages, mountains, temples, and other landmarks of the ancient Mishtek world. At the right end of the sequence are groups of nobles, each identified by the count of dots and calendar sign that fell upon his or her birthday. 
Artists attached year symbols to calendar signs to indicate the years in which the rulers acted, mainly during the 11th to 12th centuries. An example appears at upper left in this plate from the Codex Columbinus Becker. Queen Six Monkey is spatially and socially the central figure in this historical painting. Here she plays the ritual ball game, a subject for another video. The codices of the central Mexican highlands have a place in my heart because I have taught so much through them. A trove of knowledge about the spiritual influences in the 260-day calendar opens with each unfolding of the plates. Composed by Aztec painters shortly after the conquest, the Codex Borbonicus uses vibrant imagery to illuminate the gods of the 260-day count and the festivals of the 365-day year. Already in each of these two plates, we can see three separate cycles of time running in parallel. Nine nights, 13 numerals, and the 13-day count that contains them. In length and space, the largest of the three is the 13-day Tresena, which I introduced in the last video on the Asta calendar. The large field at upper left portrays the gods or goddesses for each of these 13-day periods and in the smaller rows appear the gods stationed along the nine nights and the thirteen numerals. The night gods appear to the right of each day sign, and the gods of the thirteen numbers have their own spaces, shared with a companion bird or butterfly. Some codices were entirely dedicated to elucidating the calendar. In the last video, I introduced the Aztec word for the 260-day calendar, Tonalpowali, count of days. They had a similar word for codices dedicated to the calendar. Tonal Amat means sheet of days. This is the Auban Tonal Amat, whose each plate depicts a full tresena. Much like the Borbonicus images in the last scene, the panels highlight the sequences of signs, numbers, and their attending gods along the nine nights, thirteen numerals, and individual tresenas. Much like the Maya examples, the codices of central Mexico detailed the supernatural forces that pulled on the flow of days in the mythical calendar. The Codex Borgia and related manuscripts are filled with tables depicting the numerous ways that gods drove the calendar and the calendar drove the world. This plate from the Codex Borgia divides the 20 signs among the cardinal directions, each with a central god or goddess. The signs have positions in both time and space and the Borgia tells much on this aspect of the calendar. I claim that the Borgia is the most encyclopedic native work on the nature of the mythical calendar. In this episode and previously, we have seen other subjects in this manuscript. They include mythical narratives, ritual instructions, temple scenes, and even a fascinating table of wedding fortunes. I describe the Codex Borgia's wedding table further in the upcoming episode on rituals for the sacred calendar. The next episode in our playlist on the Mesoamerican calendars looks at their most famous and colossal expression, the Aztec calendar stone. Please return to explore the intricate symbolism in this ancient Native American masterpiece.